If you've been around my channel recently, first of all, welcome, we just hit 7,000 subscribers in my first month of consistently posting. and I really appreciate you for being here. Second of all, I've been a data analyst for about seven years and I've worked for four different companies, so I have pretty solid experience in the field. But a lot of you watching right now probably really wanna become data analysts yourselves. So we're gonna talk about today why it's so hard to get into the field right now and how to get ahead of 99% of job seekers and actually get hired by the end of the year. Don't worry y'all, today we're gonna to talk about all the tea. Oh wait, did I use this mug today? That was so unexpected, oops. The first part of the tea I need to tell you is about fear mongering because everyone in tech right now is talking about the L word. And no, I'm not talking about love. I'm talking about layoffs. Dun, dun, dun. It seems like 2023 and 2024 were the year of layoffs. Everybody and their mother was getting laid off from their jobs. And all the headlines were crazy, right? I mean, Microsoft lays off 10,000 people. Meta lays off 30,000 people. And of course, those layoffs were very impactful for the individuals affected, but it doesn't show the whole picture of the industry. Layoffs create a lot of panic and everybody's so scared of getting laid off and everyone's so scared to go into a tech role because they think they're gonna get laid off. Do I need to be worried? Mm -mm -mm, maybe. But the truth is that it's not every role being affected by layoffs, which is actually a good thing if you're trying to be a data analyst. Most of the people getting laid off are in roles like HR and marketing, PR. Technical roles aren't getting laid off as much as roles that require a lot of soft skills. And just being honest, data analytics and other technical roles are a lot more recession proof than other roles are. So yes, of course layoffs are a concern, especially in a bad job market. But if you're in a technical role like data analytics, you honestly don't don't have to be as concerned. You have a lot more job security. And I will say the more technical you are and more advanced you are in your career, the least likely you are to be laid off. If you're just making a few drag and drop dashboards in Tableau and you're just a dashboard data analyst, not coding, not doing a lot of technical work, then I would be a little more scared of getting laid off. But if you're really good at things like SQL and Python and more technical skills and tools, those things are a lot harder to lay off because companies need them and they can't train other people as quickly. And that's honestly something that's a lot harder for AI to replace too. So TLDR, layoffs have not affected technical roles as much as non-technical roles. And the more technical you are, the harder you are to replace, which means more job security. I have a student in my intermediate course and she just transitioned into her first data analytics job making over six figures with a $31,000 salary increase from her previous job. And her previous job was a non-technical, non-data role in healthcare, which of course healthcare has amazing job security. But at the end of the day, she wasn't happy in that job and she wanted something different. She wanted something better on her terms. And that's why she wanted to go into data analytics. She wanted to go into a corporate role, something with good job security, good benefits, and honestly just not as stressful as the healthcare job she was in previously. And in spring 2025, she actually landed her very first data analytics job in the midst of all the big tech layoffs. Tom Sinkowski, he's useless. Go on. So don't let all the layoffs and fear mongering keep you from trying to go get that job you really want because it's absolutely possible. It might be a little more work in this job market. It might be a little difficult at times, but once you break through and get that first job and get experience, it is absolutely worth it. And I truly believe that my student got a job so quickly in just a few months because she didn't give up. She persevered through everything. She was upskilling in all of her sequels. She built a portfolio and she also listened to my mentorship. When I told her her LinkedIn profile was ugly, Respectfully, I helped her clean it up and then she started getting more recruiters reaching out. So once you implement the right strategy and have the right mentorship, it's way easier to find a good role, even in a bad job market with lots of layoffs, because let's face it, companies are still hiring. They still need data analysts to drive all of their decisions. It's not a 2020 job market, but there's still a lot of jobs. And look, if you're feeling overwhelmed and kind of panicked, I completely understand, but I have a free data analytics roadmap. It's only three steps and the link is below. So go grab it because I want you to land your dream job job just like my student did. The second main issue is the skills mismatch reality because a lot of job seekers are learning outdated skills that don't match what employers are looking for. And I blame academia and old outdated certifications. And listen, I get it. You go to school, you get a certificate, you expect them to teach you and prepare you for the job market. But the reality is that those things can be a few years behind industry. You have to look at what's happening right now in the industry to know where to focus your time and learning. For example, a lot of certificates out there are still teaching R. And I'm like, 
why are we still pushing R? Because R is very much a statistical, researchy, academic kind of language, but companies and corporations are mostly using Python. So if you're gonna choose a programming language, learn the one that the industry demands, not the one that's just showing up in your certifications. Plus, I think there's a lot of messaging out there that if you just learn a little bit of Excel and a little bit of Tableau, drag and drop dashboard building, that you can easily get a six figure job as a data analyst, but that's just not true anymore. However, most companies are using SQL because it's the universal database language across all the tools, all the industries, all the companies. Literally every company is using SQL and it's a technical skill. It's a little bit harder to replace people who know SQL compared to just dragging and dropping dashboards. But even so, companies love to use Excel and SQL and Python, but just knowing those technical skills isn't enough. You have to also know communication and problem solving and business acumen. You have to know how to actually apply those skills and show employers in interviews that you actually know them, which is why it's really important, especially in this job market, to build projects and a portfolio. That way you can showcase your skills, the technical hard skills and the soft skills as well. And speaking of skills, a lot of companies are actually looking for more technical data analysts, ones who lean a little bit to the data engineering side of the data world. And there's actually a position that sits right in between data engineering and data analytics, and it's called analytics engineering. Honestly, not a very creative name now that I think about it. It's basically a technical data analyst role who works mostly in SQL and DBT, maybe some Python, and they're helping build out those pipelines and preparing the data for analysts to use downstream. So these data analysts are vital for a company because they're actually taking that raw, messy, ugly data from the data engineers, and they're kind of reshaping it, transforming it, making it look different and getting it ready so other business stakeholders and data analysts can actually use that data for reporting. And a big part of that is being able to understand business logic and applying that to the data. So employer expectations have changed a lot in the last five to six years because they used to just be happy with data analysts who could do a little drag and drop dashboard. And not only that, but they're also looking for analysts who can use AI tools that are natively integrated into tools that they're already using. So for example, Power BI now has Microsoft Copilot available within the desktop application. And Snowflake just launched new AI functions that help transform messy natural language text into useful data. And Amplitude just launched Agentic AI, so now they have agents that help monitor and watch and take action on the whole product experimentation lifecycle. Those are just a few examples, but employers want data analysts who can actually use these AI tools. So basically, the bar used to be down here and employers used to be happy with a simple drag and drop dashboard and not as many technical skills because times were just different back then. But now the expectations are much higher and companies are looking for data analysts who were very strong in SQL, ones who can lean into analytics engineering and also implement AI tools into their workflow to work more efficiently and provide more accurate results. So if you're struggling to get a job right now, it might be because the skills you're learning are a little mismatched to where the job market is headed. But if you focus on those skills that I just talked about, you're going to stand out way more on the job market because most people are not learning these things yet. And now I'm going to tell you my own personal job search story and how I started out as a brand newbie data analyst making 71,500 for my first salary. And then I increased it all the way up to 153. 3,000. And yes, most of those jumps were actually in one 11 month period because I played the right moves. So first of all, how did I land my first job as a data analyst? I actually got it through an internship. I was a grad student getting my master's in business analytics. And some people came on our campus and they were like, we want to hire a data analyst intern. And it was me and five frat boys who applied for the job and they just didn't take it seriously. They just thought they were like a shoe in because of their undergrad degree or whatever. I don't know. But I was out there hustling. I was networking. I I made it known that that was my job and I wanted that position so badly. At the end of their presentation about the position, I stayed after, I networked, I made sure they knew my name. And then afterwards, I found them on LinkedIn and I sent them this exact message just saying, hi, I'm very interested in the position. Thank you for coming by today. And that got me automatically shortlisted for an interview. I ended up getting the job and in that job, I learned so much about Power BI and SQL and just managing stakeholders, being on business meetings. I learned so much in that internship and I was so lucky because they actually hired me on full time as a data analyst. As an intern, I was making $17 an hour, which was like insane money, especially back then. I was like, oh my gosh, I am rich, rich. 
As a data analyst, I was starting out making $71,500, which isn't too bad. For your first role especially, it's really not bad. And then I got promoted as a senior data analyst with no raise, red flag, honestly. And then from there, I negotiated internally and said, hey, I'm doing all this work. Here's all my accomplishments over the past year. I've provided so much value and I've impacted the company so much. However, the market salary for a senior data analyst is between 95 and 120. So I basically prepared and came ready with data and accomplishments. And they bumped up my salary from, I think I was at 73 at the time because of my annual raise. And then they bumped me up to $95,000. 73,000 to 95 is actually an insane jump internally without leaving to another company. Sometimes you truly just have to have the audacity and ask, but provide good value first. I landed my next job basically through networking and just connecting. I had in the industry. So it literally got me straight to an interview and I negotiated super well up to 130,000 with a $9,000 bonus, which was a big jump from where I was before. But truly I got that interview because of connections, networking. I knew people who knew people in the industry. I didn't cold apply on LinkedIn. I didn't easy apply. I didn't send them a letter and beg them. Like it was truly through connections that shortlisted me. And because they already knew who I was, they already had a good impression of me before I even interviewed. So all I had to do was be decently good in my interviews, which I was. TLDR, I quit that job in four months because I was miserable. Anyways, so then I was back on the job hunt. I'm applying for jobs and I actually got my interview for my next job through LinkedIn, shockingly. So not networking, it was actually a cold application, but I think I did message the recruiter and say like, hey, I applied for the role, would love to learn more, wink, wink. I ended up getting the job. I did study SQL a lot. There was a live SQL interview. I also had my portfolio with all my projects beautifully in there. And I honestly just think that I interviewed very, very well for that position. And I think I had a lot of confidence because I'd already been through so many interviews for that job search, but also my previous job search only four months prior. I was a seasoned well-oiled interview machine. So if you're feeling discouraged with all your interviews, literally just treat them as practice and keep going because eventually you're gonna learn the ropes. You're gonna learn how to like schmooze and say the right thing. You're gonna get better with your skills and interviewing. So just keep on going. So if you're really struggling to get a job, of course, network, be patient with yourself, do lots of practice interviews and make sure you're learning the skills that will actually help you stand out on the job market. And of course, don't give in to the fear mongering that's out there. My data analytics portfolio was specially curated to attract high paying job opportunities. And it wasn't even that hard to make. You just have to have the right plan. If you wanna see exactly how to make a data analytics portfolio that will actually get you hired, watch my video. The only data analytics portfolio you need to actually get hired. I walk through what projects to include, where and how to host them, and how to walk recruiters through them. Oh, and don't forget to grab my three-step data analytics roadmap below, where I walk you through step-by-step -step exactly how to become a data analyst, the easiest way possible. Sending you lots of big data energy year way. Bye.